The scripture reading today is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a help always near in times of great trouble. That's why we won't be afraid when the world falls apart, when the mountains crumble into the center of the sea, when the waters roar and rage, when the mountains shake because of its surging waves. Selah. There is a river whose streams gladden God's city, the holiest dwelling of the Most High. God is in that city. It will never crumble. God will help it when the morning dawns. Nations roar, kingdoms crumble. God utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of heavenly forces is with us. The God of Jacob is our place of safety. Salah. Come, see the Lord's deeds, what devastation he has imposed on the earth, bringing wars to an end in every corner of the world, breaking the bow and shattering the spear, burning chariots with fire. That's enough. Now I know that I am God. I am exalted among all nations. I am exalted throughout the world. The Lord of heavenly forces is with us. The God of Jacob is our place of safety. Salah. The word of the Lord. Take a moment now for silent reflection. It is a blessing for us to be out in God's house, gathered together in this rich and gracious uh, fellowship. It is by grace uh, that we are here, and God's grace alone. And um, I am blessed and humbled to be able to share this time with you. Thank you, uh, Pastor Emily. Thank you, City Church for uh, welcoming me and my, my family, my wife, here. Um, yeah, it's humbling to be before you. Um, and I'm so glad that Adrian again, is here with me because if I flunk, she'll fix everything with her song. So, <laughs> so I do ask that you would be praying with me as I attempt uh, to speak to you what God has laid on my heart for today. Will you pray with me? Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus who is the founder and the perfecter, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God, who for the joy that was set before him, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, 
and is seated the right hand of the throne of God. For a few minutes, I want you all to consider with me the thought, joy as protest. Toy Derricote, a famous African-American poet, says that joy is the resistance to disorder, to cynicism, entropy, and despair. It's not simply resistance, but it's courageous resistance that I suspect transcends reason. Then she goes on to say, most miraculous experiences baffle reason. The Hebrew writer says the that we ought to look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and set down the right hand of the throne of God. Family, as Christians, our joy is rooted in the living hope we have in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And while we are living currently in deeply challenging times, maybe even the most challenging seasons that some of us have ever faced, our God is still in control. And as in all things that God wills or allows, he can make everything beautiful in its own season. And in times like these, particularly, our gospel must not be hidden by the grimness of our circumstance. If the gospel is not hidden, neither should our joy It's rooted in the living hope that we have in the resurrection. And this joy is an internal state, but it is also a public expression, the hope that we have in the resurrection of Jesus. This is joy as protest. You see, in the black church, Joy amid suffering is nearly intrinsic to our identity. Stubbornly hopeful roots of our liberation theology, our tendency toward exuberance, our quilt-making creativity was born in crisis. It was bred in poverty. And it, for me, it is a lesson of how God makes our pain productive. How God makes our struggles to become our strength. And how in suffering, God cultivates in us resilience, stamina, and steadfastness. The joy that we express and the joy that we are possessed by it's paradoxical. And some would say it even looks a little silly. The joy that we possess is prophetic. But the joy that we possess is also very public. The joy that we possess is subversive. And it's revolutionary. And our joy, especially in times like this, is a matter of protest. You see, uh, my foremothers and forefathers, they sang. They marched, they sat down, and they stood up. And they created under an oppressive strain from the roots of slavery and segregation, disenfranchisement, discrimination, and racism. 
but it was the joy that they possessed. Or the joy that rather possessed them that fueled their hopeful pursuits and allowed them to plant for me a, a tree in whom shade they would never get to sit. Toy Derrico defines joy as a resistance to disorder, a resistance to cynicism, entropy, and despair. She says that joy transcends reason. And without any pun intended, I think she absolutely nails it. The irony of this joy is what Christ modeled as he endured the cross. This joy is not just hopeful storytelling, but it's instructive. Christ is our champion, but Christ is also our exemplar. He modeled for us joy in public under extraordinary weight, extraordinary pressure, more than any human being could have ever encountered. And his joy as he hung there on Calvary's cross was a witness against wicked and corrupt powers who in arrogance and ignorance condemned him to die. It was in his dying that Christ not only bore witness against the corrupt institutional leadership of his time, church and the state, but he did so with a di dignity and rich humanity that I think was fueled by his love and the joy that was set before him. So then our joy as the followers of Jesus necessarily should put us at odds with the angst that's promoted in the dominant culture. Our joy should at some point put us into open conflict with what the world values. Our joy, even as it might seem silly and inappropriate and even at times irrational, is the joy of Jesus. And like Toy Derricoat says, it baffles reason. See, the dreadful human pronouncements and the even more disturbing human behavior that's on display right now does not have the final say, say to you, family, that, that God does indeed have another move. God has another word. God has an alternative to the despair and hopelessness that life is serving us. See, in times like these that are defined by fear and sorrow, skepticism and suspicion, we have an alternative. And I say to you, family, that that alternative is joy. And that joy must be received, embraced, exclaimed, and exercised personally, but also in public. Now, this joy is no superficial happiness. It's not facile. It's not optimism. Because we do live in troubling times. And there is a need for grief and lament. And my wife uh, would agree that we have to give room to our emotions and how invaluable that is in our healing process and how integral it is to our self-care. But while we are grieving, we must never lose sight of the hope 
that remains at the center of our faith. In fact, this hope is the crux of our faith. It is the living hope that we have in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The one who once suffered was bruised, betrayed, and abandoned. We have a living hope. And this hope is cause for us to rejoice. He died, and yet he lives. How do we know that he lives? It must be that he lives in us, in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our speech, in our actions, and in our disposition, in our head, our hands and in our hearts. Jesus, who is the light of the world, dwells in us. And he is the light that shines in the darkness, that protests the shadows and send the darkness fleeing. The true light that darkness cannot overcome, and cannot comprehend. It's the hope that we cling to, the promises of God that give us strength in uncertainty. And this is a joy that causes us to sing even when it's raining. This is the love that lifts us from life's angry waves and gives us peace. And this is the gospel that we embody and we declare drenched in the light of his love, rooted in our living hope, saturated with grace, punctuated with praise, and accented with the stubbornness of joy, the promise of the living hope we have in the resurrection, the promise of God's presence with us always and in all things. This is joy as a protest. And to declare joy, especially in times like these, looks silly. But it is subversive. And this joy is as necessary as our grief and lament. I'm reminded of the word that Paul wrote from his imprisonment. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplications, and with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Or in the words of James Weldon Johnson, lift every voice and sing. Till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise. High as the listening skies, let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is one. This is joy as protest. And if you don't mind for a minute, I'd like to give you a bit of Birmingham. In our church, we say, this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world did not give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world did not give it. So the world can't take it away. 
Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us look ever to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, the perfecter and the founder, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and even now is set down at the right hand of God the Father. This is our joy and this is our protest. God bless you all.